Good Sunday afternoon to everybody, wherever you may be here from coast to coast. My name is Rock and Larry Locke, and we're starting a new show today, the What's Your Opinion show. And it's my, of course, always my privilege to be alongside my co-host, Kenny Jackson. Um, we thought we'd let everybody get a few minutes to get into the room and um, get suit, you know, get in, get comfortable before we give a little bit of a description about where we're both coming from and our other channels and things of that nature. And then we'll get right into the topic. So we'll go ahead and give everybody about another, oh, I'd say two, two and a half minutes to get in the room. And then we'll kick off the dialogue and um, begin getting into some subjects. And we got a lot of subjects to talk about, but yours are important too. So let us know and we'll give you about two more minutes and we'll get rolling. Yeah, man. Hey, um, hopefully everybody out there get that this show is brand new and we're just trying to start it up very fast and hopefully everybody get comes in and gets in the room. Um, and so, you know, that's where we at right now here, people. We're just trying to. Get this thing going. And um, we're live, so I'm good. Go ahead. You got anything to say, Larry? You want to go give out the information for uh for where everybody can um go to um for the channel? Oh, as far as like the Facebook and the Twitter. Yeah, this is where you can find us in the vast world of the internet at this point. Okay, you can find us on you can find us on Twitter at the What's Your Opinion show. You can find us and please go to our Facebook page by the same name, the What's Your Opinion Show. Go to our Facebook page and hit like. Um, we're working on one on Instagram. We still got a, a few tweaks to work out with that. But um, as far as addressing YouTube goes, um, you can you can find also Kenny on his his main channel, Opinion But Facts. I think it's soon to be Opinion But Facts Entertainment because that's kind of be kind of the uh, I like to call it kind of the mothership for a lot of other outlets and a lot of other people in the future to maybe have their own voices and, the, you know, and their own words of wisdom to be able to have a platform. But um, Kenny also created the What's Your Opinion show. Uh, and it's just a, it's just an honor and a privilege to, you know, to be doing this. I'm a little nervous right now. This isn't my first rodeo on the radio, but I get nervous until, you know, I get past the first couple of minutes. Usually it's only the introduction that bugs me, but um, you can find me on, of course, my name is Larry Bakken. You can find me on Facebook. Um, there's a couple other Larry Bakkens on Facebook, but I'm the guy with a girl, standing with a girl with a pool cue um, next to a pool table. Uh, you can find my two channels, Plating Light Grid Project and Plating Express Productions. You can find them on Facebook and YouTube as well. Like I had mentioned real quick last night, this show that Kenny and I are going to be doing is going to be tackling a lot of subjects. But one thing that I made it clear to him and I made it clear last night is that I am not going to personally myself get involved in ridiculing or stories of people calling in and wanting to know about what happened to me as far as like an extraterrestrial experience I had or may not have had. If you want to find out about that, you can go to those channels and, you know, and, and, and hear, hear what I had to say about it. I think I laid it out pretty clear last night on the solo chat I did on, on this channel, on this very channel right here. So, and the, the reason being because people, we've got a lot of shit we need to take care of right now going on in our country, okay? This isn't some head in the clouds shit. We've got real actual problems going on in our country. And here's what really started to bother me last night is that more so than the problems wearing on me is that the awareness. The awareness is so low of just how little people really know about what really goes on. And it's easy, and I'll say it again, it's easy just to say, oh, fuck it. You know, um, it, it's just corrupt anyway. I don't want to know anything about it. Think about this. If you were a strategic, whether you were an athlete, a card player, a pool shark, whatever you were, a lawyer, wouldn't you want to know everything about your opponent? Wouldn't you want to know about the, that other side that you think is not got your best interest in heart? Wouldn't you, you know, you got to know an adversary to take one down. So 
you know, it's important to learn how the Senate and the Congress run, and especially the Supreme Court people. These are nominations for life. Our grandkids are stuck with these fuckers Trump is going to put in there. Um, you know, Kenny and I will be in a wheelchair. I'll probably be pushing up daisies, and they'll be in a wheelchair by the time that we're able to get this, that our granddaughter's generation is able to fucking get this thing solved because this is the problem. And I said this last night. Let's say that in a generation or so, people really start coming together in America. Okay, let's say we kind of got our shit together, which is a pipe dream. Let's say it, though, good people. Now, here we are 25 years later. Now we're going to have about another 20 years of people on the Supreme Court to deal with that we can't get off there. Uh, their lifetime appointments. The only thing we could try to do is appoint more members of the Supreme Court when we've got a more logical thinking government in. But these people, before they die, before they fade out, these salty crackers want to make goddamn sure with one parting shot that they are running our lives for a couple generations after they're gone. African Americans, Hispanics, you know, what white people, the, the, 30% of white people that fucking can't fucking stand that kind of ilk mentality, which will all that together will be the overwhelming minority by this point. But they're going to try to leave one last parting shot with us. You know, you've seen what South Africa is going through. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to really get into that. I don't blame them a goddamn bit for what they've done to every single. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't care. I don't. That's one place I'm going to go racist. I don't care what happens. I really don't care what happens to any adult white person in South Africa that's arrogant and has a fucking attitude. Uh, you know, when you've had 8% of the population that ran a gen genocide on a fucking country, okay? These people used to, uh, these white South African militant cops used to just like it was nothing and probably still do behind the scenes just mow people down in mass. I mean, like, it, it, it's just, it's disgusting. Uh, it'd be like here, a, a police officer stopped in an African-American and having like 50 cars of them lined up and mowing them all down. It, it So I really, you know, and back to my, what I was saying about the Supreme Court. Um, yeah, they're going to be here a while. That's the problem. Okay. And here's the deal. They want this guy to retire right now so they can get it pushed through before there's a new Congress. You know, coming in 2000, in 2019. But really, the guy that's retiring right now, I think he still could have probably been swayed to overturn Roe v. Wade or gay marriage. His son, it turns out, Anthony Kennedy's son was uh, Trump's advisor at Deutsche Bank for um, a decade or so. That's starting to come out. So these are just things people and I'm going to let Kenny talk because I think I just went on a crazy rant and I don't even know if I'm still here on earth. Maybe Kenny will let me know. Yeah. You hear me? Loud and clear, brother. All right. Look, man, it's just like this. Look, we, when it comes to this Supreme court pick or whatever, I don't blame, um, anybody else. Um, I actually really just truly blame um I blame the Democrats for this. Like you get what I'm saying? I don't um I don't really I don't blame the Republicans for this. Um let's just be real truly honest about this. Um everybody have their different um uh you know opinion about it, but I just feel like I don't blame the Republicans for this. They I did exactly That's they did exactly yeah, they did exactly what they supposed to did. Like, you know, you cannot, um, the Democrats been soft. I, and I, my honest opinion, I believe the Democrats has been so soft, uh, since, um, since Clinton left, you know, because I always go back to Clinton of how they made it this real big ass deal about him just getting his dick up. You get what I'm saying? Oh, God. And, oh, God. and yeah. they tried to yeah. impeach the man because he lied about getting his dick sucked. Now, at them per at that period of time, nobody considered getting your dick sucked is basically um how would you put it? Uh sex. You know, they didn't back in those times in the, in the 90s and shit, they didn't think that way. They didn't think getting your dick sucked was this this big sex scandal or some shit like that or whatever but 
Okay, but they made it a big deal. Of course, they go back, and the Republicans always say, hey, you know, uh, no, he lied about it or whatever the situation is. He said that he didn't have uh, sexual intercourse with her or something like that, I think he said. I and that not, was actually... I did not have that, sexual relations with that woman, but I will... Right. Yeah. Right, but, but he... But he, he <laughs> But he, and he was right. He didn't really have sexual intercourse with her. You got to stick your dick in something. But now we call getting it, getting your dick sucked, sexual intercourse. Okay, that's fine. But he fought that shit like a G. And the Democrats at the times, at the time, was was backing him like a G. Okay. Now, after Clinton got out there, the Democrats started being real, real pussyfied. Okay, okay. That, and that's what happened. When George Bush, George Bush the second, got in there. That's when they started acting like pussies, and they didn't want to fight back after that. And like I said, it was so many people around that was doing a lot of horrible shit in Congress, Republicans and Democrats, but a lot of Republicans, because you've seen a lot of Republicans was basically um, they they was they was having sex with men. Come to find out, they was gay. Or oh, they found out that, hey, man, you know, um, <laughs> like, or oh, the kids was gay, and then all of a sudden they was good with, um, you know, with, with gay rights and shit like that. So they always been a bunch of fraud-ass people. Like, you get what I'm saying? But let's just move on to where we at, what you're talking about. Now, I don't blame the Republicans. I just, I don't, I cannot. Look, man, y'all know, I'll I be fair, man. I'll be 100 and I'll be real about this shit. If, if if the Republicans did something wrong, I'm going to get in their ass. If the Democrats did something wrong, I'm going to get in their ass. The, this is the Democrats' fault. So whatever happens, like like was saying, of oh, the future, we be oh, We probably be dead and gone when this shit probably hopefully get fixed or whatever because they is going to um get rid of, uh, was it Roe v, Roe v. Wade? Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I just, I want to figure, I, I'm trying to figure out Where's the feminist bitches at? That's all I want to know. Well, I brought this up, Kenny, last night, too, on the show. I said, again, I said, granted, most of them were white women, but 53% of women in this country voted for the shit and spit on their foremothers and other good people who marched for their rights. Fuck black people who marched for fucking rights that, ineffective, that effectively gave them rights. They just shit on all that to vote for Donald Trump when if the second they turned their back, Donald Trump would fucking probably grab their daughter inappropriately, you know, and this is how stupid people are. We put ourselves in this position as a collective. It ain't the Republicans' fault. It's their fucking agenda. I mean, you know what I mean? If they, you know, if they have it their way, um, Kenny's daughter will be retiring by the time we start to get this shit fixed. I mean, it, 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 as far as this, but it's our own fault. This is exactly what the Republicans have always fucking told you they've wanted to do. This is always, the, the Republicans have always, even when they were trying to hide that they were racist a little bit, you know that they're anti-choice. You know that they're anti-fucking minority. You know that they that they are into fucking weird conspiracy thoughts that everybody's out to fucking get them and shit like that and that they need a I mean, they're going to be selling tinfoil hats at gun, show, at gun shops before you know it. Uh, you know, you know what I mean. I mean, we know. Yeah, that. and see, and and you gotta think about this as well. I keep saying this, and I want to make this very, very clear to people. Okay, I do not want any man or woman. I don't give a fuck who you are. I, I just don't care. You don't get to tell other people what they can do with their body. And like I said, out all these Republicans, all these evangelicals and religious folks that are against abortion. Ask yourself this. If someone kills someone in your family and you got to go up there and they find a the person guilty and they put the death penalty on the fucking table, okay? And they, the judge is going to, he's going to listen to you when you're doing it. Are you okay with taking another life then? Because it does, it's not going to bring whoever it is that they killed in your family back. It's not going to bring it back. They're not, it's not going to bring them back. So I, I just I need people to really truly think about that because I was like I said I did, I did that that show I 
that did um that live show talking about Megan McCain. It was a little too loud, and I want to do it over, but it is what it is. But I'm gonna make the point now. Megan McCain sat there that whole fucking time, and she just kept saying out of her fucking mouth, "Well, I'm against abortion." Okay, that's fine. No one's saying that you shouldn't be, but who are you to put a law in for people to get arrested for killing someone? You, you understand what I'm saying? Or you feel like somebody's killing somebody. And and I think that a lot of times you got to ask these type of pro-life people, are you okay with electrocuting people? And these and, and these are the same states that's going to come up and vote for locking people up for, for having abortions. And these are the same states that are okay, that have that same law of killing someone else that killed somebody else. You understand what I'm saying? These people are hypocrites, and I keep saying that. And I don't know why Democrats keep sitting there allowing these motherfuckers to get away with them talking points. That shit doesn't, it doesn't even make any sense. You cannot be pro-life for kids, but you're okay with giving, letting a kid go into school and shoot up a fucking school. You're, 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 you're so pro-life, but you don't want to help the poor kids that's in, in your own your own white communities. You don't give a fuck about those kids like that. Because if you did, you wouldn't keep stealing money from them. You couldn't. You wouldn't keep creating bills. It should. If they cared about kids so much, it shouldn't be their kid starving out here. It shouldn't be shelter homes. It shouldn't be like you get what I'm saying. It shouldn't be kids that's out here starving. So, uh, get out of here with that bullshit of of they 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 pro life. They're not pro life. That's bullshit, man. I'm sick of that shit. I'm sick of these motherfucking pro-life people talking that bullshit. If you pro-life, you don't look, don't get me wrong. Right? I had to think about this, and 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 I changed my train of thought about this because of this whole situation about these pro-life motherfuckers talking about they want to get uh get rid of uh what's it uh Roe v. Wade or something, right? I said to myself, what if somebody killed my daughter? Right? My first reaction is. Is that I'm going to kill them if I can get to them. You get what I'm saying? And I said to myself, I hope they get the death penalty, right? Then I thought about it. I'm no different than them then. Like, you understand what I'm saying? I'm no different than that person. I want that person. Look, if you believe in God that much, you let God handle that. You get what I'm saying? But go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, Kenny, I wanted to jump in there because it's kind of funny. I'm totally pro fucking abortion and I'm, I'm anti death penalty because, and I agree on the last thing you said. Some motherfucker touched one of my kids or hurt my daughter or your daughter or anybody. Hey, you know what? I'm never going to convict somebody like that that fucking took out, took that motherfucker out. But what I don't want, I don't want our government having that fucking control to be able to decide somebody fucking gets the death penalty, okay? I'm all about going and getting that motherfucker. I don't want our government, because too many DNA tests have found this. I don't give a shit if one guy out of 20 trillion people that was ever convicted of murder had to do it two days, and he was really innocent to me. That, that supersedes any of this bullshit. And, and these anti-abortion people, they love they love the child so much while it's a little embryo in you, a little fetus. You know, that fucking Mike Pence was even one time in his nutty mentality years back one day. I mean, he, he was down to the point of wanting women to be careful about not disposing of their menstrual. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. I don't want to cut you off my back. Yeah, but Get it's Mike crazy. Pence. This is what I mean about them pro-lifers, right? Mike Pence, excuse me, Mike Pence is the same dude that tried to take gay kids and do them with all these um what that shit they they did that um that shit where you do experiments on the kids and shit uh, to try to kids kids. yeah all that shit you're torturing kids that, look and we're not talking about immigrants we're talking about american gay kids this is what he was trying to, this is what he was doing or at least was trying to do but you you pro-life though you're torturing fucking kids because they're gay, but but we you know we like I said at the same time and I'm gonna let you go. At the same fucking time, we don't know certain situations, certain situations where I have seen it that where people have have kids and it's life threatening for them, and the doctors tell them, hey man, if you have this kid, you can die. 
So they got to pick and choose. Oh, look, and that's a fucked up decision. Now, some people say, well, look, I want to have this baby or whatever. And that's fine. And they they rather sacrifice their life for that for that for that fetus or whatever. But if some people, you got a husband that might hey say, hey, look, look, baby, I want you here. We can do it another way. We can adopt. There's so many other kids that want to, you know, need to be adopted. And the woman will change her mind and will have the abortion. You understand what I'm saying? Terminate the pre 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 pregnancy. My thing is, and I, I'm look, I'm I'm not gonna say I'm pro life. I'm just gonna say I don't believe in abortions either. But I don't want to put a law in to say just because I don't I don't believe in abortions that everybody else have to not you know have not to believe in abortions that's not my that's their body i don't know their situation and all i say is this and i tell everybody this i don't care what color skin you are if you have a baby out of wedlock or whatever you can't take care of the baby just have the baby and put it up for adoption don't kill it you know what i'm saying it's it's other options but we don't know every situ every situation is different but go ahead i'm sorry yeah, hey, I want I totally agree with you. Here's here's my kind of thing on this, and this may be because I'm selfish and I've got two biological kids and a daughter I I adopted. But look, you know, you speak there are a lot of couples out there that are looking to adopt that can't have kids. But you know what my first thought always has been, Kenny, when I hear that is I go to these two, three, four, five, six year old kids that are already out there that need adopted that will stay in orphanages forever in foster care because they were not adopted initially right away out of the fucking womb and, and, and it's a traumatic you know i mean it's it's a uh, you know i know people have given babies up for adoption and went through like an arranged situation where um you know they had to deal with the family who wanted the child it's it's stressful and for and i'm going to make this point and then i'm going to let you you flow because I'm going to get real pissed right here about some people. I mentioned this last night to us. Anybody that would ever make the ludic ludicrous fucking argument that women would use abortions for birth control is fucking not only race, you say it ain't racist, it's sexist, it's fucking ignorant, and it's just pig minded. Getting an abortion is traumatic. I don't, I'm not a woman. I don't know how, you know, how traumatic. But I'm going to tell you what I bet for every woman that's ever had to have one, it is traumatic. And, and if it wasn't, it, it, then it will be for the rest of their life because that was part of their body. And you think these women are going to go out there, oh, if there's a fucking abortion clinic next to every fucking 7-Eleven in this store, you think women are just going to go use that for fucking birth control? And that, oh, do they really need to have an abortion? Is it really, you know, maybe they just think they do. Maybe they do. Well, you know what? First of all, fuck you and get the fuck out of my face for any fucking guy that had that kind of mentality or woman. It's mostly usually the middle aged white Christian males that have that opinion. But dude, fuck off with that, okay? And second of all, even if it was that way, it's like Kenny's saying, he's not necessarily fucking, you know, he's not necessarily pro abortion. But at the same time, he doesn't want the government fucking inside every single doctor's office inspecting everything with a fucking microscope and you know you know what i mean i mean it's not these women are not i wanted to spell the myth whether anybody's pro-life or pro-choice trust me i guarantee you go go find me i'll wait like kenny says i'll wait people with birds tweeting find me a woman that loves to go use it for a fucking goddamn um birth control situation to go ahead keep having abortions and i'm not talking morning after are you a the are you 480 pill that by the way took 100 years to get into america when other countries already had it because we're still so crazy that some of these people some of these people and i want to hit this kenny real quick some of these people are so ideological that they think the sperm from the right right at, at inception from the penis into the vagina is life and that that if you jerk off They've even they've even guilted young kids about this that if you masturbate, it's the same as committing a murder in some of these real backward Southern Hill places, real backward, like you'd see on Deliverance or something that you know, you jerked off, you just killed the life. What kind of guilt is that to put on people or a kid? And this electric shock therapy you were talking about, Pence wanting to do, oh yeah, it's been available since the you know, from the 50s through about the 70s, it was available for people who were in the know and had money. So if you had money and you were in the know, 
you could find these places to send your kids to across the country. But my God, man, it's like Pat Robertson trying to tell everybody that for every person that you killed on a video game ever, it's the same as a homicide in God's eyes. And this is the kind of shit that people are spewing still in 2018. Yeah, I, I truly agree with you. I, look, man, I just want to say this, and we can move on to the next next thing, next subject you got coming up. Um, I, I you know, I just I, look, man. I don't, I don't, I'm not that. Guy. I don't want the fucking government or the state to make that decision for any woman. If you care about women. And you love women to say uh, uh, you respect women's and their decisions and shit like that. Then, well, you have to allow those women to make those decisions. You get what I'm saying? It's nothing wrong with people going out as Christians or religious folks going out and speaking the word and, 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 and maybe touching some certain people like, hey, look, like I just said, I said, look, I'm telling all the women out there now. If you if you and having kids out of wedlock wedlock or it was a mistake or whatever the situation is, don't kill the kid. If you can have it, have it. Give the kid up for adoption. It's is a it's enough good people out here that maybe will um adopt kids or whatever the situation is. But I'm still, even though I'm saying that, I'm still not okay with the government or any state telling women what to do with their bodies if they just say fuck it i want to have a boy that's their body like stay the fuck out of that pussy like some real shit like i'm sick i'm so sick of pro-life people doing that shit that's why i said i couldn't call myself a pro-lifer even though i don't excuse me believe in abortions i told you i don't like to label myself because sometimes when you label yourself with people it, it, it fucks everything up. And then next thing you know, now you you with everybody else. And you and I don't think exactly how these pro-lifers think. I'm just not okay with abortion. But that's my fucking opinion. That's my feelings. That's my beliefs. But I don't get to put that shit on somebody else. And that's all I'm saying. I just I'm 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 sick of pro-life people, right wing nut jobs spitting this shit. You know, we're getting the Supreme Court just so we can. We can stop abortions and all these evangelicals. Who the fuck are you? You're not God. You're a servant. That's why I see these. That's, this is why I'm not religious anymore. I cannot do any type of religion. I don't give a fuck if it's if it's, if it's, it's uh, Christianity or any other fucking type of uh, Catholic. I don't. I don't. I can't do it because what happens is when you when you group yourself. And almost labeling yourself a, a being a part of something, you almost lose of how other people may feel and how other people look just because I live my life a certain type of way and Larry may live his life a certain type of way. Um, we didn't grow up the same. We don't we don't come from the same probably environment or nothing like that. But at least I have an open mind because I'm not labeled as a pro black dude. You get what I'm saying? And he's not uh, labeled as a, a a Republican or a Democrat or what have it is, or or some type of religious Christian person. You, when you don't label yourself like that, now me and Larry can do a fucking show together, and we going to disagree on some things, but a lot we agree on, and we ain't that mad at each other. Like you get what I'm saying? And that's the problem. Everybody want to be a Republican. Everybody want to be a Democrat. Everybody want to be pro pro black. Everybody want to be a Tea Party person. Everybody want to be all this other bullshit. Like stop labeling yourself. Stop being a part of something that you only just see shit one way. You have to look at it from other people's points of views. And if you don't do that, that's why you have hate. That's why you have discrimination and that's why this country was always built on racism okay this shit is not rocket scientists i didn't go to college for this this is just human decency that i have this is no degree this is just who i am as a person and if i can figure that out why the fuck nobody else can figure this out and let's just move on to the next um uh uh talking thing these motherfuckers got me pissed off too. Go ahead, Larry. Go ahead. Well, what's, yeah, what's the next yeah, thing you want to talk about? said a lot there. Yeah, no, no. I have to. To I have to totally agree. Um, 
moving forward on another subject, but real quick, I was thinking back to when you were talking about how the Democrats became such fucking pussies after the Clinton thing and with, with Shrub Jr. in there and how they just kind of, you know, caved and became real mealing mouth. And it just, God, man, I mean, why? Yeah, why wouldn't he? And then people always want to talk about this liberal media. The media is really, I mean, they were up Bill Clinton's ass just as much as they were Trump. But, you know, we, we can hash that over and rehash that over again and again. But here's what I wanted to get into it. People are going to be like, oh, God. But here we go again with another facet, though, that needs to be touched on about this fucking Supreme Court thing. But Trump wants somebody in there because this thing is eventually going to. OK, it's at the very least it's going to get to the point where it's going to go up to the Supreme Court. And what they're going to decide is whether or not a sitting president can be can be charged with it, with crimes. OK, that's never been completely defined in the constitution and some scholars argue one way or another okay and this is just fucking and, and hold on hold on hold on it actually was they actually wasn't it, it wasn't in the constitution it actually was just a, a law that saying that you just couldn't have abortions um but it actually wasn't like law that they can actually arrest people or give people the death penalty for shit like that like you get what i'm saying so um this shit like women that's what i don't understand about white women like black black women was basically didn't have rights like black folks like so it was like black men or whatever black folks just didn't have no rights right but white women didn't have so you know they didn't have a lot of fucking rights either to do a lot of this shit. so i don't understand now that they have rights that they're just listening to these fucking um irresponsible as religious folks and and white out of touch white dudes you get what i'm saying and i i don't understand it. this is not like what you're talking about it's not like something that's not like it's it's not new like i mean this i mean it, it's not it's not new like it, this shit happened before it's just we live in a time now where we're dealing with people that 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 feels for some odd reason i don't think a lot of white women understand the fact that what they're voting for and it's almost like the poor white folks you get what i'm saying they don't understand what they're voting for look the democrats ain't perfect and nobody's saying no shit like that but at least they ain't making laws and shit the way they saying they can they gonna lock you up for a choice that you made for yourself for your body or discriminate against gay people and shit like that or you know start and it was something that i heard a while ago where somebody has said that they felt like making it law for civil rights for black folks almost was like they're flipping that shit back on us now so now poor white folks or you ain't even got to be poor just a racist ass white person uh, uh flip that shit back on you and say hey man you're discriminating against me because of my beliefs and no one discriminating against you if your beliefs is about hate and about locking people up for for stupid shit of like what a woman can do with their body or discriminating against gay folks and then they're, they're using the discriminate whole sir huckabee shit as a she was being discriminated against well how the fuck do you think that black people feel like you act like we didn't get we haven't got kicked out of restaurants like you get what I'm saying, and and they're not polite to us. They're actually very disrespectful towards black folks. Okay, I think people need to do a lot more research and education before they start speaking about what's discrimination. A motherfucker tell you to get out of restaurants because whatever the situation. Even though I, I I already told you how I feel about that, I didn't like that. Let that bitch stay in there. You get what I'm saying? I don't really give a fuck about. Long as she ain't harassing me, I don't give a fuck about her her racist ass. You get what I'm saying? And and if that was and and, and it, you know how you and I meant to say this too, and I'm gonna let you go with this. And tell me what you think of what I'm saying. How you feel about this? That whole situation with Sir Huckabee or any of the people in Trump cabinet, you let them in. The owners, everybody out there, I hope you're listening. Let them in. 
what the people need to do if you disagree with that that bitch and you can't stand her like that how about the people that's eating get the fuck up and go protest that way don't tell her she ain't gotta leave these these racist motherfuckers they they love to be hated that's what they want they want us to hate them we can't hate them. We dislike them. Don't say you hate them. Dislike them. How about they just would have got the fuck up and say, look, man, I done lost my appetite. Tell the waiter, look, I lost my appetite. I got to go. I'm going to pay. I'm sorry. I can't come back here. If she's still here, I'm not coming back. That's how you protest. Because you don't use your money. And I guarantee you, shit will change. Got to use your money. But go ahead. What you think about what I just said? Well, I think that that would be, that's perfect. I, I, that would have been the perfect way to handle it if as a group consciousness, people would have started doing that, right? I mean, imagine if that would have happened. Uh, it, it would have looked bad on the White House. Plus, it would have made actually the uh, the employees of the restaurant and the owner look good, you know, in, in everybody's eyes, right? Um, at first, my thought was, okay, look, in the times we're living in and all the shit that they're pulling, um, you know, I can't blame the woman for doing it, but I think a better looking at it in hindsight, it, the perfect scenario for her would be to make the move that you just did, that you just mentioned her doing, right? Is to see, and the best way to boycott is with your pocketbook and say you got even just a couple couples that got up and left suspiciously for some weird reason, right? I mean, that that would get noticed. Right. And, you know, and it's not like these people have been called out at other places before already. They love it. They love the whine about it. And all it does is take away from, you know, some shit that they're up to and doing. They love the whine about it and play the victim and, and, and do all that. And, you know, it just. It, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. And it was and it was a story that came out. That I forgot what restaurant it was, but it was it was it was a white um, manager. And a guy came in there with a Make America Great hat on. And he told him, you had to take the fucking hat off. Right? Because I, I believe that. I, I Look, I didn't have a problem with that. They fired him. He said he, he don't regret it. And big up to him. Kudos to him. You get what I'm saying? Because he's right. Because if I come in that bitch with a fuck America hat on, people are going to be offended. You get what I'm saying? If I say I come in there with a hat on and you almost you're not doing like when they do when they wear them or make a mark of great hats on, they're doing it to to get some type of reaction. You get what I'm saying? If I got my if I wear it's like almost me. If I wear a Colin Kaepernick shirt on or a hat and I go into a, I, if I just leave my house, I'm making a statement. You get what I'm saying? I'm trying to trigger somebody. You understand what I'm saying? So people have to be conscious of that. Like, it's one thing of you okay with Donald Trump. That's fine. Make America great, even though when was America great. But anyway, that's fine. But don't act like you didn't consciously, consciously, when you put that fucking hat on and you and you looked in the mirror and seen when you left your house, knowing you leave your house, that you wasn't trying to make a statement. And then you go in the restaurant and wear that fucking hat, knowing some people are going to be uncomfortable. It's like you almost kind of like trying to antagonize people to say something or do something to you so you can play the victim. You get what I'm saying? Because I wouldn't walk in no restaurant with a Colin Kaepernick shirt on or fuck a marker shirt on or hat or anything like that because I know for sure it's going to make other people uncomfortable. And that ain't what I'm trying to do. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But you, you get what I'm saying? But go ahead. Yeah, totally. Unless it was my complete and hold on, let me get the camera back on here. Unless it was my complete intention to do that set desire. No. Yeah. If I was going in there to provoke everybody, I would wear a Kaepernick jersey. I would wear one in public um, with, you know, like 75% support mentality. But yes, at least a 25% of my mentality would be to provoke people over it. You know, and that's kind of sometimes as we think about humans. But uh, 
Kenny, listen, I wanted to touch on this thing real quick, okay? Because you were talking back about abortion. I'm not trying to get back on that, but you're ta you were talking about how you weren't necessarily right the most pro uh, abortion guy ever, but it's been the pro life movement that has pissed you off. I have this thing with the NRA where it's kind of been the one thing I've broke ranks with liberals my whole life on is I've never really been for fucking with people's gun rights but after decades of seeing these idiots and seeing that the nra how they're funneled and it's almost like the nra if anything's going to turn me against guns and being irrational and wanting them completely illegal oddly enough it'd be the one organization that claims that they want everybody to have one it's like i feel like their own arrogance their own fucking arrogance and their own fucking stupidity and their own fucking oh we offer thoughts and prayers you know courtesy of the national ruble association i mean rifle association uh they they make me want to it, it, it they get under my skin so much that they make me want to uh i almost i hate to say this i almost don't give a fuck if they were completely illegal although i'd like to still have them around a little while in case um you know, some of these 40% of these rednecks think they would like to do something to the rest of the country if something happened to Trump. But other than that, I mean, I, I just, the NRA disgusts me to the point where I, I can't even talk positive about, you know, skeet shooting or clay shooting or, uh, you know, that that's how much they piss me off. So basically their agenda of getting everybody to love guns has completely turned me almost off of them completely you know not that i'm a big gun nut to begin with but you know i've dealt with a fair share of them but yeah uh, I, look my thing is this we cannot i don't want to take people guns away that's not what i want to do um i just think i'm i don't like guns personally myself but I understand people should have guns to protect themselves and go out and shoot or whatever, collect. I don't really give a fuck. Um, I just want I just want them to vet these people strongly. I don't look if you got a um a, a violent charge or whatever the situation is, you shouldn't be able to um purchase a gun. And two, I guess, years, it's like almost probation to prove that you can have a gun or something like that. I'm okay with something similar like that, um, but I don't want to take people guns away. I, I just think anybody that, that ever be violent towards anyone, um, like a violent charge or assault charge or something like that, um, I believe that you, you shouldn't be able to get a gun. Um, I think we have to have people and and, and 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 go and mentally ill people i don't think any mentally ill person deserves to have a gun i'm sorry i don't give a fuck if you take medication or whatever it is i just don't think that you should have one because you can flip out something can happen and next thing you know you kill somebody and the next thing you know you in court talking about well i'm mentally ill and that's why it happened and, and then we just keep going down the same cycle of with this but i don't want to take people guns away um I just think that we need to be a little stricter on, on on gun laws. Like that's that's it. Like it should be. I wanted to be very very hard for people to get guns. It took my wife almost five years. Probably no. It took a little earlier than that because she she actually worked for the state. Uh, so um, it took her a little a a little. It was, it was a lot it was a lot quicker because she she worked for the state but if she didn't or somebody like me you had i had to wait like five something years to you know what i mean kind of like you know get get your license and shit like that in baltimore you know it's just i just don't like people it's so easy for people to have access to guns i don't think that we're not vetting people very properly and that's all that's all i got a problem with i don't give a fuck about who have guns to a certain extent. I don't want to take people gun gun rights away. I just care about who gets the guns. I'm sorry. Who gets the guns? Because a lot of people don't deserve or not responsible enough to have guns. So that's just my point about it. I, I you know, 
I don't really have this big issue with guns like everybody else may have with guns. Um, I'm taught of seeing school shootings. I'm, of course, I'm, you know, we just had the situation happening here in, um, in Merlin and Baltimore um, with the uh, newspaper where, where the guy went and killed five people. And mind you, this dude had a, um, a racket, was convicted of, of stalking a woman. And I'm like, and, and he still could get a gun? And that's the shit that I'm talking about. I think that's what a lot of people are talking about. That's, but but what happens is, what you're seeing with the NRA is scare tactics. Even the Republicans is scare tactics. They they put this shit out here to regular regular folks that oh the liberals are trying to take your guns away. Like no, no we're not. Nobody want to take your fucking guns away. Actually, I would prefer to have my gun just because in case a motherfucker break into my home. Even though I got other things in place to, to slow it down, but some people are just fucking nuts and they go past all the cameras and uh and uh and the and the alarms and, and might shoot your dog. Like so you gotta be strapped up and ready to go. That's just how I feel. But nobody trying to take their fucking guns away, man. Kiss my ass eh? to, to the NRA suck my dick. Yeah, you know, fuck the NRA, suck my dick too, NRA. You know, they've been trying to use that same point though for fucking a half a century that and people have even voted on that one issue oh that the democrats are going to take your guns away the liberals are going to take your guns away and i even said this last night when i was talking on the show that the answer i don't want to come round up i don't want anybody's guns they're already in circulation we've already got as many guns as human beings by some estimate but when when we get logical about it at some point like you're saying kenny you know the right they they need to fall into the right hands one and for two to get the fucking when we settle this lobbyist problem, if we ever do, I mean, the amount of these motherfuckers manufactured somehow needs to slow down. The amount of them that are lobby money manufactured needs to slow down. I mean, we, we can't, there's no sense in continuing a mass production of them. Um, you know, yet I'm not trying to get into anybody's free market business, but, but I'm only saying that because I know the agenda of the motherfuckers behind it that are pushing it. You know what I mean? I mean, they every fear story, they're coming to get your gun. They're coming to take you away. Ha, 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 he, and all that shit. And, and how many possible guns? No, but trust me, people out there, nobody is coming to get your fucking guns. And, it's, and especially if you really need to have them taken from you. It, that's another thing. We need to start vetting people that have guns in professional situations. Cops, prison guards, military. I mean, yes, even our loving military that's fought for our freedom for, uh, I think it was like 70 years ago, the last time they were in a war for our freedom that you could even make an argument for. It's been corporations since then, no offense. But um, uh, what, these cops, I, I don't know what you can do to vet the, that, the, the, um, that machismo, that racism sometimes out of them. I don't know what you can do, but there's got to be a little bit better psychological testing we can do. There's got to be, but it, it, it has to come from the top down. You know, it's, it's going to someday have to come from the Department of Justice down all the way to police ranks. Good luck under this DOJ, but it's a, it's a mindset that needs to change among people that go into lines of work that carry guns. I mean, those are careers where there's no fucking margin for error okay i'm okay with kenny fucking up a million times at his job and getting a million chances and keeping it up but not if he was a cop or fucking somebody in the military or somebody who had access to you know make a life death decision in a fucking second with a weapon i mean there's just no room for error at all and no recourse to go get another job just like you had somewhere else I mean, there's no margin for fucking error uh, you just can't. It's I think. Yeah, like, yeah. Hey, like, hey, me. I don't mean to cut you off, but yeah. It, it, look, you, you're right about that. Like, I'm not. I get into. Look, man. I I never understood how people get very angry to the point that where they gotta go shoot people up because they lost a job or whatever the situation is. I, I I would never understand that. I can't comprehend that. Even if even if it's about racism, 
because I, I guess because I'm a different type of breed of 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 of, a, of, of some type, you know, a different breed of a black person that um that racism is what it is, and I I believe whenever racism approaches me, I can deal with it right then and then and there. Like you get him, you get what I'm saying, and I don't I don't see me being so angry to the point that where I go and just start shooting my place of work. You, you get what I'm saying? And and I'm not knock. I'm, I'm not saying. Yeah, I am knocking those type of people. I I don't understand that. Um, and I, I and believe it or not, I try to sometimes, but I just don't really care. Like it's just because you killed people. Like you're not dead. You just got bullied, though. You get what I'm saying? Or you got discriminated against. Let that shit go. As long as a motherfucker don't physically harm you or anything like that, I can't see how you can you go to another level of of just somebody saying certain certain stuff to you. But um, when it comes to cops. I don't think you you will be a hundred percent of of vetting those type of people, um, because I mean it always should be some type of well if you're a cop we're look if I if you work for me at my like my my department I'm always gonna have a, a entity where we keep an eye out on your social media like you understand what I'm saying that's how you could that's how you pick them motherfuckers out right. Um, but I, right away of uh, vetting some people lie. People can people lie in interviews. Talk about how great of a worker they are, and come to find out, dang shit. Like so, it's hard to vet people in that way. But I, as far as when it comes to police officers, you, you, you all you're right. I don't think if you if you and I don't care, man. If you got some type of if they fired you. For your conduct in any type of uh, police brutality or shooting somebody or killing somebody, and they and they fire you for that from at, at another um spot where you work that falls a department, and you shouldn't be able to go get another job in that same field. That's all I'm saying. You get what I'm saying? I don't even think you should be able to be a security guard. So I'm not saying you just totally just say that person can't get a second chance of working somewhere else, but not in law enforcement, not anything that got anything to do with a weapon. If you got police brutality on your record and you got fired for that, that should be a no, no. And that's the problem. That's where we need to start at. You get what I'm saying? I, I think just like the dude that, that, that shot and killed the little kid in, in Pennsylvania, this motherfucker came, he got fired from another department a couple of years back. For police brutality conduct, and he wound up getting another fucking job in the same field. I don't understand that, and I never will understand that. And that's why you keep seeing these people kill unarmed people. And then I keep saying this: yeah, it's happening more to black folks, but it's happening to some some white people like that. The statistics is, uh, are not high, but like I said, the shit fucked me up when I seen the shit in Arizona where the, where the little white kid, you know, he was almost th like the fucking officer was like, Dad, I dare you just to make, make a mistake and I'm going to kill you. He was so, like, he was agitated. He, he was so ready to kill his kid. And then he killed him. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? And then the fucking, they didn't arrest him. They didn't fire him. They didn't do shit. They just let him go. Said, well, you know, hey. He was in his rights of doing it. How? Because they won't give me or you that same type of leadway of if we have a home invasion. Like a motherfucker come into our house and I shoot a motherfucker out of the out of the out of the out of the, you know out the gate. And I say, hey man, he said, Well, why you shoot him so quick? Hey man. That motherfucker was in my house. I feared. I didn't know what the fuck he got, so I shot him. You, they will lock your ass up for that. 
So I, I, I don't understand how the cops can get off of doing this type of shit. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't understand that. That, that shit is not resident, resident to me in my brain. I can't understand that. And I won't understand that because it doesn't make any fucking sense. I don't, I don't give a fuck if you black or white. I don't care, man. If a cop does that shit to anybody, man, that shit is not right. And we, and like I said, we're living in a fucking time where Donald Trump has almost edged these people on. It was already a movement behind them anyway because of the whole Colin Kaepernick situation. And then Donald Trump gets in office and then say, "Hey, get get a little get a little bit more tough with them." What that means in these crazy deranged ass cops' mind is go ahead, shoot them, shoot them some more. They make a move, shoot them. You don't like the way they move, you don't like the way they talk, beat them, shoot them. And that's all that what that was. But go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was just thinking, frustrated that I wish I I feel because I, I wish I could I wish I had some of these answers, Kenny, to the questions you're asking about. It this doesn't make it doesn't make any fucking sense. I mean, much less ever getting a job again for fucking shooting somebody at point blank range as a cop, but just what that fucking cop said. Just the way the, their tone. I mean, that should at least get them fired from that department alone. You would think in any other, and people don't give a fuck. And why? It, it, it just it. I don't know. I wish I fucking had an answer for it. It drives me nuts that we continuously. And now we've lived in a society for years where we the proof is in the fucking pudding. It isn't just your experience, my experience. We heard this, we heard that. This shit has been on the news, been on social media of it going on to fucking people. And people just, uh, why would they want to give the most leeway to the people with the most kind of fucking unchecked power that can really run their departments like a fucking, like a national gangster syndicate, you know? I mean, they have access to everybody's police record, everybody's, you know, they can find out who you are in a second, they can connect this, they can get you a job here. They can do this and they can do that. And it's just, it's fucking, it's mind numbing that we keep letting it happen. And it's just, it's a frustrating, slippery slope that our fucking country is going down with it, man. And I don't trust cops either. And I don't trust cops because I haven't unfortunately had as much the experience now that you have probably dealing, growing up as an African-American. But I don't trust them because they're not. There's an agenda, even if I'm just dealing with them, and I've talked to my kids about this too. Be polite, respectful, but don't answer any questions, you know, until you talk to dad or, you know, talk to a lawyer, whatever. Don't, don't, because they're, they, they've got an agenda. They're, they're fishing for information, okay? And they don't give a fuck about you. They're just trying to use you. And you're right about that. On a home invasion, man, the first question they'd be asking is, well, did you shoot him too quickly? Uh, did you think you needed to right away or some bullshit like that? Whereas it never gets questioned when it's a cop doing it. Um, and then the cities check. Here's what's so funny, right? All these cities end up having to pay out multi-million dollar lawsuits and it's never enough to replace a loved one. But what kind of insurance scam is that going on to work? Even if you were a corrupt, evil motherfucker, why would you keep realizing, keep go of being cool with, losing all this money in lawsuits i mean the of course these are you know these are people these are people not losing their own money because they're, they're I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna ask, I'm gonna answer that question for you because they're not paying that money we are people that work nine to fives every day we're paying that money and so they don't give a fuck. you get what i'm saying and, and, and that's why I said it, it comes to a point of where it comes down to us as the people that we have to stop electing people that are, 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 are um, um, it's almost like, a, um, like, like when you're a nine to five worker, you're basically, when you're paying your taxes, you're basically, you're basically investing in yourself. You get what I'm saying? Because the money is supposed to invest into you and the community your social security when you get older or whatever it is right um we have to understand that so when we put people we vote people in office and have these people in power we have to understand when shit go fucked up and go wrong we got to take a little little bit more responsibility for it as well because 
they're using our own money to violate our own rights. They're creating laws that violate our own, own our own rights through our own money. We actually are supporting it, even though we're against it, but we're still paying our taxpayer money. Look, man, the thing at the end of the day, and I keep saying this, and what's going to happen soon, I'm telling you, if Donald Trump, because they kept saying this shit on Bill Maher, and he kept saying, him and Michael Moore, they kept saying, hey, man, if Donald Trump does lose, he's going to fight and kick and not going to want to leave. But that be the day, that will be the day that where the Civil War will actually happen. Because I don't give a fuck that you have a cult of racist ass people riding behind you. You keep saying you're about the Constitution. You keep saying you're about law. But now when it comes to where it's your time then ran out, Barack Obama didn't kick and scream and say, no, I should be president for life. Um, George Bush didn't do that. Clinton did, didn't do that. George Bush Sr. didn't do that. Reagan didn't do that. All of our presidents. They didn't do that, even though a lot of them was racist sons of bitches. But they didn't kick and scream or none of that shit. So if Donald Trump, and if it came to that, and Donald Trump ever did that, and I'm and I'm putting it out there as opinion buff facts and letting everybody know, if the day that happened, the day we go into the White House. Seriously. He got to go. Sorry. That's where I don't want people not to lose their guns. And everybody go on. Fuck that. You don't get to do that. Sorry. So what Bill Martin was saying, bullshit. Bullshit. If you got half of the motherfucking country, Ray Rod, you gonna have to nuke half of the country and kill even some of your own people that riding with you. So his ass got to go. Look, now if he win, I'm going to be angry. I, actually, I'm not even going to be that angry. I'm going to be disappointed in people like I was when he got elected this time. But he don't want to fucking, I, I'm going to be okay with it because, I, like I said, they will tr really truly feel the whole effect all the people that voted for Donald Trump. See, we expect the fucked up shit to happen and come with Donald Trump and his fucked up policies and how he's acting and how stupid he is, right? Well, not stupid, how not bright he is, because he's not stupid. He just ain't that bright, that damn bright like people want to give him credit for. Now, I'll be okay with it. I'll give him another four, and I'm going to keep fighting back, of course, of course. But that motherfucker get out of doing his eight years, and he talking all this shit and the government or whoever in the government, the Congress, whoever, and pass a bill and say, oh, he can be president for life. That be the fucking day. I say, fuck my job and fuck everything else. We riding. And anybody, you don't take it. I'm, I hope YouTube or anybody else don't take it as a threat. It's not a threat. It's not a promise. It's what's going to happen. You don't get to fucking fuck the Constitution up because of the simple fact that you are a fucking psychopath. And you got a bunch of psychopaths that's sucking this dick and they got their own agenda to take over this country like a dictatorship. And first of all, black people ain't going to deal with that shit no more because that they almost give us flashbacks of what our ancestors was going through as being slaves. Well, we ain't had no rights. Fuck out of here. But anyway, but go ahead. <laughs> yeah, sometimes I just get deep into listening to you talk, man, when you get on a wisdom flow and no, I agree. I, I, again, I said this again on one of my solo talks towards the end the other night about this, and I, I put this out there that this is exactly word for word what I said, and that, you know, I, I don't care if people can take it how they want. I said that if Trump is impeached or if he decides he does not want to leave office voluntarily, if he's ousted, I said that the 40% of these rednecks out here that think that uh, they may want to take their battle to a urban neighborhood, a black neighborhood, a Hispanic neighborhood, a liberal neighborhood where they think all, all us white liberals on the West Coast are just a bunch of pussies without connections ourselves to shit. Um, if they decide that they would like to try to make a move like that, they're going to think they're back at Appomattox, brother. And people Google Appomattox, that's the last war. That's the last battle of the Civil War where they got shut down. But I mean, seriously. 
if it comes down to that and they want to drive their pickup trucks and Confederate flags and try to start some bullshit, they're going to get the full on wrath. And I agree with you. I'll be pissed if he's legally voted in again. Um, it'll just show how fucking stupid our country is. Um, I'll stay here. I might consider moving to Canada. I, you know, I've loved Canada my whole life, even though I've only been there once. But um, yeah, and you know what? And the crazy thing about it, I was thinking the same thing. I was thinking to myself, I, I, th that's part of the real reason why I told my, you know, I, you know, I didn't want to move because I don't trust what's going on with Donald Trump, and I don't trust this country like that. And I think to myself, I move to fucking Canada, man. Like, seriously, like, I, I'm real about that. I ain't going to be on no Snoop Dogg and all them rappers talking all that bullshit. And they got millions to go and do and move. But if this motherfucker uh, even attempt to do that, I don't think I even have the, I don't even think I would think about moving to Canada. I, man, you're not taking something that my ancestors helped build. You're not going to take us back to that. This is just as much as our country than it is the white supremacist country. And I'm not saying it ain't their country. I'm just saying that you can't, you are not going to say that it ain't mine. You're not going to try to take my motherfucking rights away or my door. I'm not even thinking about me because I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm willing to die for some shit. Okay. I'm talking about my daughter and my nieces and my nephews and all the other kids out there. You're not doing that to them. You're not taking us back to that time. Just because you crack ass, crack ass, white supremacist. Think that was a good time for for y'all which it was that's when america was great for y'all but for the rest of us it wasn't good motherfucker and so i i believe put like this i believe that they, they they i don't know why they think this but let them think that i don't know why in their mind they think that if they ever try to attempt some shit like that this country will die like it wouldn't be america anymore Okay, and so and because they keep forgetting, we got black minority people that are in government that don't fuck with Trump that are close to a lot of the weapons and shit like that that they keep talking about that the government may come to come for us with the weapons. It's a lot of our people there. It's some good white folks there as well. And I'm telling you, if they ever fucking even felt like this fucking government or this or this president was doing some shit like that, oh. Yeah, this country is done. Mr. Farrakhan was warning us about this shit. And, he, and when it happened, he'd be exactly fucking right. And see, and there's too many groups of good people out here that ain't going to stand for that shit. I don't know why they think that. Just because the Democrats are a bunch of pussy motherfuckers in government, but it ain't no pussy ass Democrats that are not, that, that's out here that's regular good folks. And I don't know why they think that. Fuck, they act like you know, crazy shit about it. They act like uh, Democrat people don't fight for this country or something. Like, it, these motherfuckers is nuts and honeys, man. But anyway, go ahead. Because Kenny here, I'm going to be a little sarcastic. They think that way about Democrats because since about the year 2000, like you mentioned, all of a sudden the Senate Democrats got their heads in the clouds and thought that all they could do is sing kumbaya to the Republicans and and everything would be fine and that they could cave in on everything and not fight for president obama's nominees or his bills or his i mean i i don't know it's frustrating it, it it pisses me off because you know i mean i follow that political persuasion i don't like to be labeled but if you were to look at the definition between the two parties i mean it's obviously i agree with the one that has a fucking non-racist pro pro uh average normal human being on the street mentality um, right hold, hold, hold on let me cut you off but that's what i'm talking about that's what i'm talking i don't know why they are so shocked that black people won't or minority people vote for democrats i don't know why they don't understand that i, I like you don't do nothing for black folks not nothing and if you do something for certain black folks, they're already rich. So we don't have the same interactions with, you know, with the same lifestyle interactions. So it's different for people like me and, and, and brothers and sisters like me or even you. Like we don't have those same interactions with, with rich people. We're not hanging around those folks. 
We don't have that type of money. So we're looking at the policies that you put out. I'll put your racism to the side for right now what I'm talking about. But far as, as your fucking, your policies, why would a fucking minority person vote for some shit like that? And I ain't talking about these black and minority public figures and shit. I'm not talking, about, I'm talking about regular minority and black people that live nine to fives, work hard every day, or even just poor gangbangers or whatever. Why the fuck would we ever vote for y'all? Why? Like, if you don't, your policies does not have a good effect on us. How? You're trying to take away shit. And don't get me wrong, I thought about this as well. When it comes to welfare, I think they do need to um, restructure that. Because the reason that you have more people on welfare is because some of the fact they give you all these these things that what you can't do is almost like um what the shit called um like retirement like when you get retired when you retire from you know from your job or whatever they tell you you can't you know work certain how many hours a day or you won't be able to receive your retirement and i think that's bullshit because in fact i work for that i invest my money into that that's why you were taking money from me for my retirement but anyway that's a whole nother fucking uh subject but it's like that if if i'm going to do what i do in this country of being a good person and sacrificing things that i normally wouldn't sacrifice to be a good citizen you gotta respect me if I'm going, I'm buying by the rules here and there, no one's perfect. They, these motherfuckers walking around like they're perfect. They're not perfect. And they're running around, and you in a position as, as somebody that is in the well, government. Andy, and we, Andy, and we Andy, put you there, but go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Call, I'm sorry. I gotta, hold on. I got to call bullshit. Isn't, I think Megan McCain's perfect, isn't she? No, I'm kidding. Go on, brother. I was just being funny. Yeah, I, look. But that's what I'm saying. The, the Republicans act like they don't fuck up or like i don't get it i don't understand why people eat just not even people like megan mccain just regular republican folks look i don't have to grow up around poor white folks you know why i can't know why i don't have to because i already been poor before i know what it feels like i know what you're going through so i don't need to i don't need to talk to you and have a conversation about trump supporters that's poor because i already know how it feel to be poor so I don't need to have conversations with these folks. And look, look, man, we in the, we are in a a a situation, and I don't want and I don't, and I want to move on to another subject. But we are in a situation. I'm gonna let you get the last word on this. But we are in a situation of where, and I keep bringing it back down to just this one thing that we're lacking. I don't care about poor white folks. I don't care. That's Trump supporters. I'm sorry. I want to make that discreet. I don't care about poor Trump supporters. I don't. I don't care. Sorry, I don't. Right? Now, we're in a, in a situation that where people don't understand that we are not we, I mean, we do not have any humanity anymore for other folks. And that's the problem. We are so far gone. And, that, and that's what I don't like about when some white folks use Martin Luther King. You are so far from gone from Martin Luther King. You even got some stupid ass black folks out here, minority people. Y'all are so far, y'all didn't listen. If you listen to Martin Luther King and you respected that man like that, this shit right here was going on in America right now, or what everybody is dealing with, because everybody's dealing with this bullshit. You know nothing about Martin Luther King. You don't respect him. You just, these are the same fucking folks 
a lot of these crack ass, old ass crack ass crackers that was against Martin Luther King having a birthday, but they okay with Columbus. And he stole some shit. You give it to me? Yeah, yeah, totally. Exactly. So they used you okay with you okay praising a racist, a slave owner, somebody that stole something to a person like Martin Luther King that have never stole anything from anybody. Not saying he was a perfect man, but he was a he was way better than Christo Christopher Columbus and any other them fucking other presidents. That you give them birthdays. Now, let me ask you this, and I could be wrong about this. Do we do we celebrate? Um, do we have a day off when it comes to um, Abraham Lincoln? Are we off on his on his birthday? I think. I don't think we are. Uh, I think we used to. They combined it into a President's Day, didn't they, or some shit? Like they had a couple of them, and they combined it. I don't. I know we do a President's Day. It seems like we used to have a Lincoln Day and a Washington Day, and then they combined the, the President's Day. Right. I don't know. And I don't think we. I hey, but I, I, everybody loves Lincoln so motherfucker much because he freed the slaves. We should have that day off. He should not have a day to where they can put that shit with other presidents. He he was bigger than them because he actually did something right. We celebrate. Christopher Columbus, like he's some motherfucking god. He's not. He's a fucking racist in the in, in, in the slave owner. America was founded way before we got here. Even not even by Native Americans. Other Vikings have been here before. Africans have been here before. He, he's a fucking. That story is a fraud. But for another time. No, I know that, but I'm just saying the way how they think. I'm only. I'm trying to go off of how these idiots think. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, I forgot to drop the LSD before the show to go there. But yeah, no, go ahead, man. But they always praising this, this, th these, these type of people like they was gods. They was not. These people was horrible human beings because they created some of the constitutions and law. So what? They wasn't doing it for everybody. They was only doing it for themselves or people that look like them. That's it. God damn, I, I wish people would stop that shit. Like, I'm not trying to say we need to erase history, but I, but be honest. It's another part of that. Stop looking at all the good shit they did, because if, if it's like that, prime example, and I'm going to let you go with this, let you get the last say on this, and then we move to another subject. If it's that, they want to do that. They don't want to talk about the bad shit that all them racist ass presidents did, all them slave owner presidents did. Well, we shouldn't look at what Bill Cosby did then. All the horrible shit he did. We should just only look at that he he created uh, the Cosby show. How about we just start doing that? What you think about that, Larry? Um, there's only one problem with that, his skin tone. That, that's, that's what, that's, that's, that's why. No, oh, I mean, but hold up, hold up, but that's what I'm, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I, 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 I get what you're saying, but I'm just trying to prove a point to these ignorant sons of bitches. You, we just can't just excuse, all right, he made the Cosby show. We love Bill Cosby for that. Black people definitely love and white people. But we can't we can't ignore that this motherfucker was was drugging bitches. We can't do that. No, fuck that. Or even if we feel like they set him up. But Bill, you did you did admit that you do shit like this, and you got caught. Either way, if they set you up or whatever, but you still did it. You give it to me. So. We can't ignore that. You don't want us to ignore that shit, but you want us to ignore what Christopher Christopher Columbus did and all them racist ass presidents did. Get the fuck out of here. But go ahead. Go ahead and put the last word and we go to the next subject. There's no more to say on the last word on that one. You're totally right. It's uh you could come up with a laundry list of presidents that uh most of most of them have done worse shit than Bill Cosby has however you want to look at it. If you were to dig deep into most of their past. 
Um, Hold up. Let's yeah. just look at it. Let's just look at it. Let's just look at it. And then we can move on. We can go to the next subject. Mm -hmm. Look, think about this shit. Okay, Bill Cosby did what he did. Let's just say he did rape these bitches. Okay? And the reason I call them bitches is because of some fact a lot of these bitches didn't come out into the Me Too movement came. And if that shit affected your life like that and he raped you like that, you don't wait that motherfucking long. And I don't believe at least half of those bitches that that shit he actually did that to. I believe they was okay with it. But anyway, that's just my opinion. Okay? Now, let's just say he did. He, well, we're gonna, let's just say, but he did that, right? If I'm not mistaken, Back in those days, even if you, just as to say, Christopher Columbus or anybody other than other presidents didn't rape bitches, didn't rape black people. I'm sorry, black women. I'm sorry. But they knew what's going on and allowed it. Don't that make you a compass? Don't that make you just as more responsible for that? Then wasn't they okay with people hanging black folks? Killing them? enslaving them what's worse look raping somebody and drugging people or whatever they did that, yeah that's bad but just think about all the extra horrible shit that these so-called presidents was doing and was allowing and have seen for themselves and did nothing about it wouldn't that fuck you up a little bit more than the bill cosby not saying what he did was okay i'm not saying that but i'm just saying who who's more Who's more of a motherfucker that we shouldn't be praising? We shouldn't be praising Christo Christopher Columbus. Come on. Yeah, no, fuck Christopher Columbus. I I exactly, yeah. I mean, I think you've touched it all on that point. And exactly, who are you going to... Uh, yeah, I mean, we're talking about the difference. You talk about Bill Cosby. Okay, we're talking about the difference, whatever, a minor, major felony compared to a fucking overlooked genocide. Uh, done in you know rapes over fucking hundreds upon hundreds upon years and crimes done to a fucking you know race of people or or to really anybody that got in these fucking uh, you know any of the, in, in these people's way anywhere they wanted to try to conquer in the world that they were off to whether it was here or you know whatever hey, hold on. whatever hold on. And, the, and the crazy thing about hold on and the crazy thing they was raping white women back then too like, that's what I don't understand. I, I understand about these white women today. Like, they raped your ancestors, too. Like, they got to do their history, man. I just think, oh, man, this shit just, it frustrates me to talk about this type of shit because I don't understand, I don't, I don't, for some odd reason, I don't understand why white women. Fuck the white dudes. Like, you get what I'm saying? The white women. What is wrong with y'all? They did this shit to you. They was raping y'all back then, too. Y'all was basically slaves, too. You had to do everything that your ancestors, your female women ancestors had to do everything that that white man told them they had to do. But I understand, too, why a lot of them white women want to fuck with black dudes. I know why, but go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. It's true. The white ladies do love the, do love the black, do love the black gentlemen. But yeah, well, exactly. They had no rights. You know, they were supposed to be kept barefoot and pregnant. And you know, I, I don't understand it either. I don't understand what it is. Is it a self not worthiness of the way they feel inside of themselves? Is it now? See, I'm not going to generalize a geographic uh, part of the country again, like I never do the South, of course. Ha, ha, ha. But you know. I think white women are made to feel like, especially in that Christian ideology, Bible something, Bible belt of a lizard mind control frequency. Uh, hold frequency. on, hold, like, hold on. And I'm gonna go. You know, not, Bible, they, not, they do the they, they do the same that. shit that 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 black people do. They have been brainwashed through religion, and so that's why they accept a lot of the shit that you see them accept. It's almost like black black people. We accept. A lot of what white America tell us what we need to do or what we need to say or how we should act or whatever, how our posture is or whatever, how we talk or how, you know, how how calm we have to be. 
It's no different than the white women. And I keep saying that. I don't understand about white women. They don't get that shit. And like I said, they've been free for a little minute. You get what I'm saying? They've been free j just as much as we've been free, right? So it ain't nothing but the same type of mentality that that uh you know that we deal with, that white women deal with. You get what I'm saying? It's just that a lot of us are more as black people, we a lot of us are more woke about what's really going on. White women, they kind of really don't understand their history either. I think they need to step their self out of just being white. They need to understand as being a white woman. What was y'all history back then? Okay, a lot of you white women did a lot. Y'all ancestors did a lot of horrible shit, but y'all was a lot of y'all was brainwashed just like we was. You don't think that back in those slavery days that they they took black black men, the house niggas, and made them house niggas kill their own people? Yes, they did. So I think. A lot of white women need to go back and do their history about their, you know, about their history in this country as well. But go ahead. You actually finished on the point, a point I was going to make. It was basically that uh, though the, you, you know, you want to know the difference. The difference is, is if you're talking to an African-American who's like what you're saying is that, OK, they're, they, they are a little bit awoke at the very least. It's not a lot awoke. Maybe they don't know. You can see. Thoughts. If you are talking to some white woman like that, and stuff, there is not an awakeness yet in them at all. It's you. You might as well be speaking a fucking Marnu Martian or Venusian to them. Their eyes will get this crossy glaze, and they won't. They're not awoke at all. That's the difference. They don't have. They're a step or two level below yet. I think of being able to mentally maybe even start to kind of even in a conversation be open to this because their mind will go their eyes will start batting like a pinball machine if you were to ask them that whereas you might get you know an african-american who you say it that way you might get into a conversation with them and you might get them to think about some things and opening up the dialogue and talking typically then but you, you can only push these white women like this so far because it's they're especially american southern ones their eyes will start like a pinball machine so that's my last point on that subject brother so bring on the next subject and, and or finish off on what you want to say on that and yeah let's ta tackle and tackle another subject you pick uh, yeah I, I'm, I'm done with that because like I said you know like I said it's I, I always grew up as 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 this this person of um it kind of like I was sitting, I was down there with my with my uh my family. I was in I was uh, you know I mean uh, was, uh, was it just, uh, Friday I was in, I was in there to see my homegirl and um I'm sitting there talking to my family members and shit about you know how I used to be. I was very hard headed, and so I I I I heard them, but I really I really wasn't listening to a certain extent. On certain things you get what I'm saying I was always one of those kids that where like I had to go through the experience to really understand the effect of it like you get what I'm saying and even when I got in my 20s I had to feel the effect of something like you get what I'm saying but I guess once I kind of like turned like got in my like my late 20s and and, and you know and I turned 30 in my early 30s you kind of like you know all that you don't have time to kind of keep making them same type of fucking mistakes or having that same type of um, feeling of like you, you can just go out here and just experience something sometimes. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because just like at my age and, and who, I is, who I am as a black man in the atmosphere, I don't, I can't, I can't keep making, I can't um, have those same mistakes like I, I can't make those same mistakes as just being older and, and being more accomplished and, and kind of being in uh my own um you know kind of like i'm stable like you get what i'm saying so a lot of shit that i i, I thought i can make mistakes on i can't do that shit anymore i have to make a better decision before i even go out into you know, be okay. All right, if I fuck it, I fuck it. I fuck up, I make that mistake. I can't do that no more. I have to really, um, kind of, you know, 
it's the it's the word I'm looking for, but it, it's 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 almost like I kind of gotta make sure. I gotta you. I gotta. I gotta be smarter. Put it like that. I gotta be smarter. Like I gotta actually look at the situation carefully. I just can't just run in it, you know, straight up like that. Just like all right, fuck it. If I make the mistake, oh well. But I can't do that no more. Now and I gotta be like, uh, is this shit gonna hurt? Can I? You think is it enough of a risk? Fucking. Can, can I do that risk? Like you gotta think about that shit. So you know, for me, it's it's just a little different. I just think like a lot of times that. You know, I try not to, like I said, I always tell you all the time, and even on the sh on, on on my show, I try to tell people all the time, I don't want to, I don't want to think about race. That shit is, is 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 is, believe it or not, is very stressful. Um, and I and I don't like to have, I don't like stress. I don't, I don't like to be constantly thinking about shit that actually, to me, honestly, to me, racism is stupid, and so it's like. I'm thinking about this shit or talking about race all the time and I got to be aware of shit that's so stupid to me that it almost frustrates me. It angers me. And I think that's where, where you see a lot of black folks kind of like they get angered about it because they're frustrated about it. like, why are we dealing with this shit? It's like, why? Like, it's stupid. Like, because I'm not going to treat you that way. Why are you doing that shit to me? And I think a lot of times some Cracker ass crackers don't understand that. You give them, they just don't truly get it. They don't understand why black people just they get they get angry or they 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 got this 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 they they they, they look like they're agitated or they look like an angry black woman or they look like an angry black man or we we you know we we're aggressive. They 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 don't understand that we we're sick. We don't like dealing with that shit because it's stupid to us because we're not. I, like I said a while ago, we don't wake up thinking about that shit. We waking up thinking about, God damn, I got to go to work. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I got to go to fucking work and, you know, you know, I got to deal with these stupid motherfuckers at the job. And mind you, it ain't, it ain't about white people. It's just people, period. Like, sometimes I just wake up like, man, fuck, I got to go ahead and deal with stupid ass people, man. And people piss me off and and shit like that. I don't be thinking about race like that. I, like, that shit is not on my mind. But then, you know, you watch the news, and I'm more of a, um, I'm on social media a lot. So, and you watch this this racist shit happen all the time. I have no choice but to talk about it. I'm, I, look, man, I'm a um, I'm a leader. I'm no, I'm no dude that sits in the background anymore. Like a lot of a lot of shit, I used to just let go. It ain't happening to me, so what? But hey, man, I started the Trayvon Martin shit changed my life, and I keep telling people that that shit changed my life. So I'm just on a, like another different level of some shit. Like I just don't, I, I don't want to sit back. I don't give a fuck what color skin you are. If it's wrong, it's wrong. I, I'm fighting against it. I'm sorry. I can't, I can't sit back anymore and just keep allowing this shit to keep constantly happening and not saying anything. Because if I feel like if I don't say anything, that means I'm I'm accomplice to the shit. I'm I'm okay with the shit that's happening, and I'm not. So that's why I, I talk about race as much as I do, is because some of fact racism does exist, and people don't want to admit it because they think because you well, you can walk down the street if you want to. But uh, yeah, maybe in my neighborhood. But if the police pull up, no, nah, my heart start beating. Or if I'm in a white neighborhood. Now, now these days, I'm a little skeptical of being in a white neighborhood. Sorry. It just is what it is. It's just my feeling. And at the same time, I wasn't afraid to meet new white people. Now I am. I don't want to meet new white people. You ain't cool with me. I really don't kind of want to befriend you like that. But then that shuts down who I am as a person. So, you know, you know, I, I work on it every day, man. It's, it's a work in progress. But I want to get into this next subject. And I want to get your thoughts on this. And um, we going to, because uh, we almost on that 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 two hour mark. We going, uh, and we going, we going to leave this subject. We going to leave this with this subject. Now, we're dealing with a crisis of people that are very, very, very 
stupid. And I mean stupid. I'm 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 not saying that they, I'm not saying that they I'm calling them stupid. We got a lot of people in this country that is very, very stupid. And I want to get your, your point of view on this situation. If these stupid ass Democrats do not understand that we can just have difference of opinion on things, but our enemy is white supremacy. If they don't focus on that hate, they will lose in November. They will lose in um, 2020 when Trump is up. You get what I'm saying? So they, uh, they're going to lose. Because if you don't focus on the hate and the vindictive and the racist and, and, and just the inner bigotry that people do have, like Megan McCain, only reason I call the woman a, a racist is because she's so stupid in her mind that she really truly thinks that she doesn't discriminate. That's what I call a naive racist. You understand what I'm saying? So that's why I call her a racist because she's so naive and so stupid that she doesn't understand that you're saying racist shit and your beliefs doesn't make any sense. I knew the look, the last thing I seen and I put it on the show was that she was saying about pro, you know, being pro life, but she's still quoting the constitution. Are you quoting the Constitution, bitch? You're talking about taking somebody's rights away. You don't know everybody's situation. It's just, it's just sad to me. You cannot believe in the Constitution if you you okay with states or government telling people what they can and can't do with their body. You get what I'm saying? But you okay, and and I think somebody need to ask her. I believe on that show. Somebody need to ask her if she is against the death penalty. Now, if she is, I get it. But on the other hand of that, it still doesn't make any sense. I can understand that if she against uh, um, executing people, but against the death penalty, I can get it. I understand that a little better, but it still doesn't make any sense. You're still contradicting yourself a little bit. So my thing is, what do you think? about what I said for us, like if these Democrats don't focus on the racism or what's going on in this country, they will lose. And the reason I say that is because I want all black and minority people and even good white folks to not vote for some of these candidates if they're not gonna focus on the racism of what Donald Trump is putting out there. Cause they, you know, of course the news people, they keep saying, well, we need we need not to focus on that. We need to just focus on the, the, the issues. No, that's not the, Look, black people have been poor for a long time. That's not the issue for us. That'll come once you get in there. I mean, I mean, we're not. We multi. We we can, we can multitask, but you need to focus on the elephant in the room for us. And I think that should be for all black folks when they even come to these Democrats. Are you fighting against these racist motherfuckers? I don't care if you. Oh, I'm not rich. I don't care. But Donald Trump is racist. Can you call him a racist? And you got some Democrats that do, that does do that. The one chick in, in, in um she running for Congress um in New York. You got certain people to do it. Auntie Maxine Waters, a couple other people. But these other fucking Republicans that are in, I mean, other couple of Democrats that's in power that need to go. 
Nancy Pelosi, she got to go. Chuck Schumer, they got to go. If you're not going to speak on racism, you th that's my number one issue. I can't talk about nothing else because that affects me more than because I can go out and get a job. Look, everybody can't, but black people, we hustle. We, we look, we ain't got no job. We get on the corners and we grind. I'm not condoning it, but I'm just saying. We know how to get a little money to survive. But the racism shit and the police brutality, I need that shit to be focused on. And if they're not going to focus on that, black people should not vote for these certain type of Democrats. That's all I'm saying. But go ahead. Yeah, well, yeah, I've been thinking a lot about this lately, too, and have touched on it. Um, whether you're a moderate uh, Democrat, whether you're like me, the kind of a progressive one that is against people taking PAC money and for a fresh blood in the party, or you're a corporate Democrat, um, I, you know, look, the time the time to hash all this shit out, okay, we've got a lot of time to fight all this out and fucking move forward. But you know what? In the next four months or so, if we don't fucking get our shit together and fucking pull together and quit fucking nitpicking over shit that really does need to be looked at, but let's, you know, once these primaries are fucking over with, once it comes down to whoever the Democrat candidate is where you're at, vote for him. Vote for her. Okay. And then we can address once we get into once we get into January and we have control of the House, hopefully the Senate, I don't know. That's kinda iffy. It's gonna be here or there, but have control having control of the House, then we can look at getting rid of dinosaurs eventually like Pelosi and Schumer or put the heat on them more than like you put the heat on them to fucking give us guarantees that this is going to be their last motherfucking terms in office at least pelosi schumer too i mean i don't know how old schumer is but those two need to be replaced but it, we can't let it become the big center story of this big inner fighting that we're doing because we do this all the time it's fucked a lot of our voting base in several elections um you know it, it's uh it's it's cost us the electoral college even though when we won the popular vote but um people need to just suck it up a little bit for pelosi and fucking schumer for five more months and then yes we can start really making a push to get rid of those two fossils and that's the way i feel about it because the one thing the republican my god i forgot i was thinking of one great thing they do do those fuckers stick together like like rats splitting i don't know like rats on a sinking ship together i mean that they they stick together they can talk all this shit in their primaries in everything but boy they tow the line they have no shame they can sit there and call each other every name in the book in a primary and then suck each other's dick and lick each other's ass once it comes time to actually support them and there's an ego issue in the democratic party and i understand there's a young part of it that's progressive and very um non pack oriented which i am mainly too i'm probably like about 80 percent 90 percent that way and still a little bit 10 percent old school corporate dam but not a corporate dam in the sense of the corporations running shit just kind of a you know on a couple other issues maybe like the military and shit but still um you know otherwise we're just going to go down we're going to get beat in these districts in these congressional districts and then that's going to give the republicans the opportunity to also control the new ger gerrymandering gerrymandering districts that'll affect uh, congressional races in the future in some of these states I mean, people, come on. We've got a few more months to go. Yes, Schumer and Pelosi are a couple of old fucking fossils and a couple of sellouts that would, you know, that would sell you, that would sell you out probably, probably a second or two in less time than, or in more time than Trump would. It would take Trump. But, you know, we've got some good positive people in there. So that the young lady from New York, like, I'm, I'm shaming myself. I can't remember her name right now. Stacey Abrams, who's probably going to be the first black female governor ever. I would like to see her build some notoriety and really become a dark horse maybe for president. Because a lot of presidents were former governors. You know, it's not just senators and congressmen. It's governors that come out of nowhere, like Bill Clinton came out of nowhere, like Jimmy Carter kind of came out of nowhere. And um well i wouldn't say shrub shrub jr came out of nowhere but you know he was a governor but uh, that's how i feel about it so you know this inner fighting let's stop 
and this this mainly goes out to white people because they like to play this on African American African Americans show up solidly hate. I mean, because they get it. I mean, they realize, you know, the devil they know versus the devil that they don't want to fucking deal with and don't know, and 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 realize that at the pier of it, at the, at the center of it, the issues are right. It's just the frustration of ever getting these motherfuckers in there that are actually gonna not talk out of one side of the air and just show up once every more than every four years. You know what I mean? But, you know, it's one of those things where most African-Americans are sensible enough to realize that they'd rather deal with the motherfucker that's going to show up every once every four years than the KKK coming to their door for a day. I, I, I put it like this, and I keep saying this. I, I wasn't that big of a uh, fan of... I ain't going to say fan. I, I, I didn't fuck with Hillary like that. You get what I mean? Off of the previous shit that I know about her. But people grow. And I believe at the same time, I think that Barack Obama had an effect on her. So that's why I would have voted for her. Um, I think black people... We came out 80 something percent. It's not us. The Latino community, the, the Mexicans or whatever, we came out big. The problem was was that Hillary didn't talk to those 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 white epidemic of people. She she forgot. Excuse me. I think in her camp they forgot that. My honest opinion, I really truly think this. This is why she lost. Because the black people was behind all the minority people was behind her. She had enough of our votes. That's why she won the popular vote. Believe you me, that's why she did. Um, what the reason that she didn't win the electoral co uh, college votes is because she forgot that even though you trying to please the poor minorities and black folks, that's fine. We understand. We we're not that stupid. I'll for some odd reason, she think that we're not with. The, for some odd reason, these people think we're stupid and we can't do two things at once. We don't understand what's going on. We probably understand, believe it or not, black people probably understand policies better than white folks, because policies really truly affect us more than any other race in the country. So we we get it, we understand it. You get what I'm saying? Now everybody ain't that damn bright, but I'm just saying. We can we we understand. You get what I mean? She forgot that she had to go out there and touch those those middle America white folks and mainly women, even though they disliked her. But if she had just got like tried to touch them in some type of way, if she would have, because they tried to blame Bernie for this, but. That's the thing about independence. Independence can gather Republicans and Democrats in their party. You know what I mean? That's what Bernie did. That's why he was the best candidate. That's why he would be, he would still be the best candidate for run for president in 2020. So, you know, I don't understand. Well, was it 2020 or 2022 or something? I think it's 2020, right? Is it 2020? 2-0. 2-0, okay. He will be better off running because he can, he can, they can hate on Bernie all the fuck they want because I hear a lot of Democrats doing that dumbass shit. But anyway, even some dumbass Republicans because they say he split the party. He didn't split the party. He's actually better for both parties because it's fucking Republican folks that actually fuck with Bernie. That's why he's so popular. He's popular than any fucking um, he's popular than Trump. He's popular than any politician. He's the most popular politician. And I don't know why people on a Democrat side don't push him to run again because all these other Democrats and shit that's coming up, yeah, you're going to get the Democrats' votes. 
And you may get a couple of Republicans here and there that got tired of Donald Trump and this bullshit. I just don't think it's going to be enough. You have to put Bernie, you have to push Bernie back out there. And then what you do is, because Bernie's smart enough to do this, he will put a black, young, or minority uh, vice president to run. And that would help. And they just, for some odd reason, these people don't, these the Democrats don't understand this, man. And you got to have somebody that's a social justice warrior, somebody that don't want to take funds from the people and shit like that. You have to do that. From I mean, from these corporations, I'm sorry. And so you have to have somebody like that. If you keep running off these same corporate as Democrats, they're going to turn off black folks. That's why, why you think so many fucking black folks more than any Republican voted for Donald Trump. That's why. And at the same time, because Barack Obama should have did more and they was highly offended that he didn't. That's why. That's why he had 13% of some bullshit like that, Donald Trump. But come on, man. We got to be real. We got to be genuinely honest about this shit. It's nobody, my honest opinion, is nobody right now other than Bernie Sanders, and I love Elizabeth Warren, but it's nobody in the Democrat Party that actually, um, and maybe the, the chick from um, New York, that's a senator, I forgot her name, I think she's a senator, white lady, god damn, what's her name, the one Donald Trump disrespected a while ago, I forgot her name, um, but maybe other than her, she may have a chance and I love Elizabeth Warren, but I just don't think, I think Donald Trump has almost humiliated her and denounced her so much of, of like even just being a woman, you know what I mean? Like he disrespected her so much. I think people ain't going to have that type of respect for her. And that's what he did to Hillary. You get what I'm saying? I think that was part of it as well. But you got somebody like Bernie, because you don't really hear Bernie. Sa he, you don't really hear Trump talking shit about Bernie Sanders because he knows that. Bernie Sanders talks shit about Donald Trump more than any fucking Democrat. Even more than Miss Maxine Waters. You notice he only go against them women like that or them soft ass men. He won't go at Bernie Sanders because he know better. And I think if you're a Democrat or you're somebody that's going to vote for being a Democrat or independent, I think you probably want to push Bernie to run again. Because if you get a soft-ass Democrat to go up there and act like this man can just say whatever the fuck he want to say to you and you take the high road, you're going to lose again. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, totally. Consciousness is totally pouring through you right now. Actually, here's the thing. We, you know, you start talking about Bernie. And then the only back of the mind concern is, is that, okay, God damn it, I wish he was still four years younger. But the perfect answer is what you said. And he's smart enough. He gets himself a fucking young, uh, up and coming uh, black candidate, whether that's, you know, wh wh whether it's uh, the lady from Gov, you know, the Gov Super Governor from Arkansas or whoever puts it in, you know, or puts that in place in case something happens to him. Um, you know, I think that's the perfect way to go about it. I love Elizabeth Warren too, but. There's just certain places she's not electable in this in this country, and and, and it's Trump not Ella, Ella, It's not that she's not electable. Her, her it's, Trump is it's, it's, her with his, his insults. Hold on, hold on, hold on. It's, it's not that she's not electable. Well, Montana that, Democrats aren't gonna like her. Like that's what I'm. No, no, I, I, no, I don't think that. I, it's not that. I don't think it's that. I just think she's right. She's electable. I just think she's just. Donald Trump will destroy another woman. My honest opinion. He will destroy that other woman because he's so disrespectful and so ignorant and so um so much a, of a of a sexist. They, one -on -one debate. they had an opportunity to and re Trump refused to do it. It was something for charity during the 2016 election, but no. That would be epic. That would be like uh, that'd be like seeing the thriller in Manila. That would be an epic if those two. Yeah, were hold up, hey, hold up, and you got to think about this too. 
the reason I say he he shouldn't go up against another woman is because some of that you got ignorant ass white women out here that think that's a, that's okay because they think they should just stay in their own place. A woman should stay in her place, right? They got women out here that think that Trump got supporters that women uh, Trump uh women Trump supporters you got out here that think that women should not even be running for anything like in government. I have seen that shit when he was running, right? And they still supporters of him, right? Um, and they frauds, they don't give a fuck about women rights, they lie. But anyway, um Trump Trump, the thing about what Trump need that somebody to go against him is that he needs somebody like a, a Bernie Sanders. And I, I keep saying Bernie Sanders is the better candidate for anybody. I don't give a fuck. I just don't care. Bernie is the better candidate and the Democrats need to back him and push him and just go. Right? They will. Because, because what will happen is if he ever get out of line and Bernie going to bring it up. Bernie going to say, hey, you don't like women. You disrespect women. And he's going to bring that shit up. If you have another man sitting there defending women, that's going to resonate with women, especially in, you could say, Trump, even Trump women, some of them, not all, but a little bit of them, going to be like, you know what, he, he did do that. But when you ever seen Bernie Sanders disrespect a woman or something like that, you get what I'm saying? That's not in his background. He doesn't even have that. But Donald Trump does. You get what I'm saying? So when Donald Trump get out of line or say some stupid and horrible shit, all Bernie got to do is say, dude, you're a sexist. You don't, you don't care about women rights. Well, I hire women. Yeah, you hire women to disrespect them. Like, Bernie ain't no pushover. That's all I'm saying. And if Hillary Clinton did not, um, if Hillary Clinton did not, um, what's the name, did not, uh, If she did not, um, you should have picked Bernie. Coward. I mean, uh, yeah, no, 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 no. If Hillary did not fuck Bernie over. The DNC didn't fuck Bernie over. Bernie would have beat Donald Trump. We wouldn't even been here. No, but what I'm saying is, like, say Hillary once she got the nomination, right? I mean, it's this bit. It, listen, this is what pisses me off. If she would have had any sense, and Bernie was willing to do it. She would have picked Bern Bernie as her vice president to run with her instead of fucking Mr. Plastic Tim Kaine. I mean, how could you? Who would? Uh, it, it, Bernie Bernie was ready to do it. Warren was ready to do it. Why would she? Even with the biggest election fraud you could ever imagine, if Bern if Bern Hillary would have took Bernie with her, and they would have ran as a team. Because she was a corporate Democrat and she was arrogant of thinking she was going to beat Donald Trump without Bernie. And that's the thing I'm saying. That's the mistake that they're going to make. And, I, and we're going to go after this. I'm going to let you get the last word after this. That was the problem. She was arrogant. She thought she was going to beat Donald Trump because he was so disrespectful and ignorant. But she didn't understand. It's a lot more disrespectful and ignorant ass people out here that she really didn't realize. And then when she called Trump supporters deplorable human beings that really fucked her because you had people that did fuck with bernie that probably was mad at bernie because he supported her but i guarantee you i think they was more mad because she didn't make him the vice president if she would have made him the vice president you would have seen a lot more of them independents roll with with, with the democrats but but they he almost kind of like gave in and they didn't like that shit and i don't blame them because I would have told her, I'm not going to back you unless you're going to make me your vice president. Like, we got to stop being soft and pussies, man. Like, you get what I mean? Like, seriously, I'm not a Democrat, but I'm just saying for us Democrats, like, they got to stop doing that shit. But I'm going to let you get the last word so we can get out of here. Oh, yeah, brother, totally. Like, if they would have got that shit out of the way right away and Hillary would have came up to him and said, look, look, I want to pick you as my vice president. And, you know, and, and Bernie said right back to her, okay, no more of this bullshit thing. Let's just fucking go forward and do this. And if, if Hillary would have approached him like that months even before the primary was over, they could have, you know, the two of them could have had an energy that could have just swept the nation and, and done something really wonderful together. Um, I think Hillary learned a lot from Barack Obama. And 
I, if, if, you know, aside from her ego, her being a little bit of a bitch and her and all that, all in all, I, I, I think I think she would have been a fairly decent president, but uh, but I'd rather see Bernie in there, and I think Bernie can win it this next time because we're going to keep putting pressure, and other places are going to keep putting pressure till we get them the Democratic nomination with a strong African American uh, behind him, whether it's a female or whether it's God. I want Cor God, Cory Booker. Just I like him, but he did something one time to piss me off, so. He needs to win you over a little bit more. Otherwise, he's, 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 he's still he's still a he's a corporate Democrat too, yeah, and I don't like. Him. Yeah, he's 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 still he's still bucking a little bit, but yeah, but um, so so we'll have to see. But Kenny, thank you thank you for this first show. Um, I'm going to um, it'll of course it'll appear on the channel right away after the show's done. But I'm going to go ahead and distribute it to some different places after a while after i get back from picking up my son and doing a couple yeah. of and um i pre look i appreciate you my brother you know how i do this is our first show we go and I, and I tell people all the time this is our first show we're gonna get better we got some things because you, you have some things that we didn't even get to do on the calling certain people or uh, certain things but you know we, we we're gonna work on the show more and, and, and i'm um I got like two days of uh, work next week. Um, and, yeah, uh, in progress. And I apologize to everybody tonight for being a little bit. Yeah, we, yeah, we we just starting out, people. It's just out. This is get better. Yeah, we're gonna get better. We got other things that we got coming up, and like I said, we're gonna work on getting phone calls to call in and stuff like that. So we're gonna we're gonna work on this stuff, and at the same time, my people. Um, we we're gonna do better. It's gonna be better. Like I said, we're doing real good. Um, matter of fact, what's the name? Just hit hit me up. Um, um, Cali. Cali just hit me up, and so I, he watching the show. He said it was a good show. Um, but um, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna call him and talk to him a little bit. We need him on soon. We need him on soon. I'd like to yeah, I'm gonna talk to him. So we, you know, you know, I'm trying to make that other show for us as well. So you wow. know, what I mean, for the three of us. So I'm gonna get in. I'm gonna call him right after we stop doing this. But anyway. I want to say I appreciate you, my brother. We always good. You know, I got love for you. And like I tell the people out there, make sure you guys subscribe to this channel. Subscribe. This show is going to get better and better every week. We're going to do bigger and better things. It's just right now I was sick in the beginning. Um, and, you know, Larry was a little sick at the end. And then I had a few things. Once I got, uh, you know, I got from out of being sick, I had some few things i had to do and then we, we we wasn't communicating the way we supposed to but we definitely will be communicating next week because i got two days of work next week i got monday and tuesday and then i'm on vacation to uh next month next monday so we, we made him definitely gonna get up we're gonna work on some things and the show will actually it started at six this time next week it definitely will start on time at um at 5 p.m eastern time at two o'clock on the west coast but go ahead go ahead Lark. yeah two o'clock on the west coast five o'clock back east um and i would just like to again give a shout out to our facebook channel the what's your opinion show it's actually our page please go there and like it and check us out on twitter like kenny mentioned and um check out kenny's other channel opinion the facts and um hit the subscribe button on this channel and we're going to keep better you know get better equipment and you know, this stuff is a work in progress, so I'd like to send much love to everybody out there. And, um, yeah, and I, Paul, I'm glad Kenny's feeling better. I'm not sick anymore. As for me, you know, Larry, I'll always be a little bit sick, but, you know, I, I still love you. Love, 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 love. You're good, too. I can't do, I can't do this show without you because it wouldn't be it wouldn't be the show if it wasn't for you to be hey, on the show. Hey, good. I'll plug <laughs> myself real quick a little bit. Hey, go on to, go on to our channel, What's Your Opinion? Uh, on the What's Your Opinion show on YouTube and check out three of my solo talks if you really want to be bored by a white guy late at night. Much love, everybody, and we out.